Hi, this is an introduction to Tailwind CSS. Feel free to code along with this course. So let's begin with a blank file. So Tailwind is essentially a very convenient library that we're going to use to speed up our process of working with CSS. So first of all, let's go ahead and get the default template for our HTML page. We have the responsive meta viewport and we have a title. We're just going to call it hello for now. Okay. The first thing you want to do is import the Tailwind library. You could do that by just importing this little script tag from and it gets it from tailwindcss.com. You could use that use this to just get started immediately right off the bat. So first of all, let's go ahead and see what we can do with Tailwind CSS. Let's try importing an image from the internet using the IMG tag. So let me go ahead and copy the source of this image. So there we go. We have an image on the screen, right? Now let's go ahead and give it some width so it's not that big for us to work with. Um, let's maybe make it 400 and yeah, that looks good. Okay, so let's try to use Tailwind CSS now. Now let's say I want the corners of this image to be rounded. So I can just use this class, rounded. And I can mention how much I want the radius to be. So let's say I want it to be a bit larger than it already is. So it'd be LG, which means large. So let's try and refresh this page so we got the border radius. So let's say 3XL. So 3XL works fine for our case. Now let's say I also want a drop shadow for this image. So I'll just go and write drop hyphen shadow. And we're going to get a drop shadow immediately. There we go. We have it. It's quite faint. So it's not that visible. But it's there. So now let's go ahead and add some text. Let's say I want an H1 tag. So let's go ahead and write, let's just write Tailwind CSS. You'd notice we don't see any styling because we haven't done any. Um, so let's say I want the font to be bold. So I'll just write font bold conveniently using the Tailwind class. And then I want the size to be a bit larger. Let's say I want it to be like 5XL. So I'll just write that and there we go. We have it right now. I want these to be on the same line. So I'm just going to write this class inline hyphen block. So this essentially just makes things inline block as you would in CSS with display inline block. Now I want the H1 also to be inline block. Now you'd notice we have it on the same line. Now that's looking good. Uh, but let's say I want some margin to the right of the image. So what would I do in that case? Well, I would just go ahead and write MR, which is margin right, and hyphen 4. So it makes it, so I could write hyphen 5, 6, 7, as much as I want it to be. Let's say I want it to be at 4. I'll just make it 4. So... Well, that's looking, that's looking all right. Now, let's go ahead and make the color maybe blue. So I'll just go and make it like, not font, it's text blue. Okay, now I have to mention how much I want it to be. So I want it to be 100. So it's light, right? If I make it like 500, it'll be a bit darker. I could make it 800, it'd be much darker. So there are inbuilt colors that you can use you can easily refer this from the documentation. Now, let's try and do some other things. Now, let me show you how many uh, headings you can do. I'll just write introduction here. And I'll just give it a class because we have to. Text, like let's say 4XL. Let's make the font bold. There we go. Let's refresh this. We've got the introduction, right? Now let's say I want this to be, I want this to be in a div. Um, this is on 
a section of itself and let's give it some margin to the bottom so introduction comes after the margin so I'm going to give it MB margin bottom and I'm going to make it like 8 so there we go we've got some margin here and then the introduction section starts okay now let's say I want some more margin because I want to add some more things below this I'll make it MB4 okay now similarly I could just copy this and paste it right so I've got margin of 4 below I've got margin of 4 below let's make this heading 1 okay and let's make this heading 2 now this heading should be a bit smaller let's make a 3xl so there we have it we've got a heading 1 a heading 2 which is smaller we can make it even smaller than that Let's make it 2xl make it heading 3 there we go so you, you must have got a good idea of the inbuilt text sizes that you can use the fonts you can use like you can make it bold and you could make margin bottom and similarly you could do MB ML margin left or you could do MR margin right right or empty margin top now let's try to make a paragraph. I'll just write some dummy text here and I will just so you'd notice the paragraph is quite small, right? Let's make it a bit larger. Let's say I want it to be large, so text LG. This would do the trick. There we go. We have it. Now I want it to be a bit lighter than than the other text. Okay, so I could easily do that with opacity. Let's make the opacity 70. 70 would make it a bit lighter, right? Um, like 10 would make it even lighter than that, so we don't really want that. We want it to be just a bit lighter. So we'll make it 70. So there we go. Now we've seen text colors, we've seen drop shadow, we've seen inline block, we've seen the headings, we've seen the opacity. Now you'd notice we don't really have much of padding to the left and right of this uh, page. Now, this wouldn't really look good, right? So let's go ahead and give it some padding to the left and right. We'll just do it in the body tag for now. So I'll just give it PX, which is the padding to X in the X axis, so left and right. And I'll give it like, let's say four. So there we go. We've got some padding to the left and right let's see how it looks if we give it a batting fake well it looks good let's leave it at that or maybe we also need some padding to the top so let's give it like pt8 here as well there we go we've got some padding to the top you could similarly give it a pb which would give it a padding at the bottom we won't do that for now because we want to make a footer in the end now let's try to make some buttons um, so let's make an A tag to give us a link. For now, let's give it just a simple hash. So we've got this little link here. It's not doing much because we haven't given it any style. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's give it some padding, okay? And I want the padding to be in all directions. So I'll just simply write P, okay? Four, let's say. So I want it to be have a padding of four, okay? So have a padding of four on all sides. We can't really see much. So let's give it some background so we can actually see what's happening. Give it a background gray, 100. See? Okay, there we go. We've got some padding and it's giving it a background as well. But you'd notice it's overlapping with a paragraph. So because it's not inline block. So I'll just give it the class of inline block. Now that I've done that, it's having, it's on a line of its own, right? Okay, so far, so good. Let's give it some border radius as well. So let's say I want it to be LG, large. Well, that looks good. Now, maybe I want the button to have more padding to the left and right. I'll just give PX, let's say eight. There we go. Now the button is a bit more wider, right? Now let's say I wanted to have a different color. Let's say maybe pink. So I'll just go to the 
this uh, BG pink and I'll write 600 maybe uh, let's say 800 um, I don't know maybe 400 would be it's too it's too it's popping up that's yeah that looks good okay now let's make the font bold and just maybe maybe we need the text to be a bit larger let's see how it looks um, well that looks okay in my opinion maybe the top and bottom padding should be a bit less yeah okay so in the paragraph tag let's go ahead and give it some margin to the bottom so we'll use MB let's give it margin of 4 there we go we have this little button okay let's make some more buttons now you'd notice we have we don't have that much of a margin to the right of this button so I'll just go ahead and write MR4 now we have some margin okay now I want the text color to be different here so let's make it white so I'll just go ahead and write text white there we go and I want this um, button to be like black so let's do that black there we go we have two buttons of different colors on our page using Tailwind CSS we didn't write a single line of CSS all with the classes of Tailwind so this is the power you get when you use Tailwind you can do things very quickly okay now let's go ahead and try to do some other exciting things let's try to make things responsive okay so I'll just copy the same tag as I did before and I'll write some text here all right you can make things responsive okay now I want the top to be a bit separated from it so mb4 there we go now let's try to make things responsive below right so you must have used cards in on websites you must have seen cards which like have an image and some text below it so let's go ahead and make a card okay let's just add an image i'll just copy the link to the same image we used before there we go we have a little image right but it's too big let's um make the width well actually we should not worry about the width let's make the width auto so I'll use W auto and here in the div I will yeah let's just leave it for now we'll not do anything with it so um, let's go ahead and write some text below this okay let's write some dummy text maybe not this much up to here so we have it it's barely visible because we don't really have much for padding so let's just I'll just give some padding here so it's visible there we go so this is the text we have written and I want this text to be in the center let's say so I'll just give the div a class and it will be called text hyphen center that's it now all of the text in the div would be centered simply right now let's um maybe we need some rounded corners again so i'll just do a rounded 3x style there we go now maybe we need the background to be a bit gray so we can distinguish it and know that it's a card and not just any div okay there we go now we need some padding as well so we'll do padding of four there we go that looks all right um, for the for the paragraph let's give it some margin to the top so we'll use empty hyphen four now the margin has some uh, it has some margin to the top right now going along with the design choices we've made earlier let's also make the corners a bit rounded here right let's make a 3xl let's see how it looks okay well that looks all right maybe we need the card to be a bit lighter than this there we go maybe the text should be a bit larger not this large maybe just lg 
how about that okay so um you just saw how a little card was made now this this card is occupying the whole width of the screen right just give it some drop shadow so you can like distinguish it it's barely visible but it's there you could refer to the documentation if you want to increase the magnitude of the drop shadow like opacity spread and all those things it's quite convenient and you can do it easily so now we have a little card if we copy it we will get another one below it of course but we don't really want this to be the case what we want is this card to appear side by side in a grid and it should appear i like, have two item two cards in one row okay so we'll go and use a very convenient feature of Tailwind CSS, which is called grid. So we'll make a division, a div element. We will give it a class and give it the class of grid. Okay. So now this element, this division is a grid. Okay. We'll mention how many columns we want. So we want two. So we'll write grid cols two. Okay, great. So we have, we now have a grid. Okay but we don't we don't really see anything so let me just show you how it works i'll make another div i'll call it one i'll make another one i'll call it two you would notice that we have two elements side by side here okay now if i make another one it'll come in the next line okay if i make another one it'll come here similarly if i make more of these they'll conveniently accommodate themselves in a grid okay uh, we don't really want these divisions here. What we want is our card to be there. So let's just copy our card from here. Put it in the grid. There we go. It's in the grid. We want two of these. So we put two of these side by side. Quite convenient to send it. You'd notice our cards don't really have any space between them. So we'll just add another little class called gap in our grid. So every item would have a certain amount of gap we'll give it a gap of four there we go now these elements have a gap of four great we have some cards we have some headings we have some links all without a single line of css how convenient is that okay let's go ahead and make some more um yeah so we have like six cards at this point and they look great but what about um, viewing them on a phone. How would they look then? Let's just resize this and see how that would work Now if you look at these they're quite small and if this was a image centric Page we would want the images to be a bit bigger, you know so We need to make things responsive and we want these cards to accommodate the full width of the screen when viewed on a phone How would you do that? It's just a simple line. You just write here SM, which stands for small. So when you're on small screens, the grid columns should be one. And when you're on big screens, the grid column should be two. Okay. So now since we're on a small screen, you would notice our grid columns are coming in one column. Our grid items are coming in one column. Yeah. Now let's resize the page and see what happens. There we go. We have our items in two columns and we have it in one column. In a single line, we made it responsive. How convenient is that? So that's the convenience you get with Tailwind CSS. Now let's go ahead and do another thing that we require in websites, which is the footer, right? And to make the footer, we'll use the same concept of grids because we want two columns for the footer. Okay, I'll just make the footer into a grid, so like we did before. I'll write grid, I'll write grid cols2, which makes it a column of two. I'll make two divisions. One would have a certain amount of links, and the second would have a certain amount of links. So you'd notice we have this here. Okay, so let's make a link and let's just call it um about okay let's make another one and another one of these okay we'll just call it contact and we'll just call it blog we have three links okay they're all coming in one line 
we want we don't really want that so let's just make them block block elements so now these will occupy the whole space now that they are block elements they're occupying the whole lines and we'll just copy paste this here and we'll get two columns of links now let's say I want these links to be aligned in the center I'll just go and write text center that would do the trick I want some padding as well so let's make it happen and I want some well I want some padding not really padding I want some margin I want some margin to the top empty there we go and we had previously added some padding here so we'll just remove that padding to the bottom because we don't really need it for now and we are going to add some padding to the bottom here oh, let's say how much 16 okay well 16 looks good maybe to the top as well we would do 16 so we'll just write py so it makes it for the padding top and bottom to be 16 there we go we have two links two columns with links and let's just write some other links here like resources maybe videos maybe support there we go we have a little footer with two columns how does it look on phones well it, well, it looks all right maybe we want it to be in one column so we'll do the same trick we did before we just write grid columns one now when we look at it on phones it will come right in one column so there we go now maybe just maybe we need the text size to be a bit larger let's go ahead and do that well there we go there you have it a simple footer now maybe you would want the footer to have a bit would uh, want the footer to be a bit distinguished so you'll make the background gray give it some padding some margin to the top so it comes after some space now you'd notice we the footer is not really coming all the way to the full screen width it's because we made a decision to add padding to the body class so let's go ahead and remove that for now and make another div and we'll put the we'll put the padding to this div and wrap the whole page in that except the footer so we'll just go ahead and do that there you have it you have padding x in um, in both directions and you have the footer occupying the whole screen width okay so mm, it was that convenient to make grids not that hard in just one line without writing CSS that's quite convenient isn't it so there you have it a simple page um, it's demonstrating you all of the things you can do with tailwind well this is just scratching the surface you can do a lot more so this, I hope this was a quick introduction to Tailwind CSS and things you can do with it. And I hope you found it helpful. We will also be covering more advanced concepts in upcoming courses. So be sure to check them out as they come out. And this will be it for this video, for the Tailwind introduction. And let's see you next time. Good luck.